And we are back on the Zero Hour. Joining us now is Ryan Grimm, Washington Bureau Chief for the Huffington Post and an MSNBC contributor. And we'd like to thank a good friend of this program. Ryan, thanks for joining us again. Oh, thanks for having me. Hey, listen, um, I, first of all, I always love talking to you for a variety of reasons, one of which is that there's always the buzzing sound of a busy newsroom in the background. <laughs> You are a real reporter. There are one or two left in America, and this is (laughs) is one of them. And they said it couldn't be done. So, um, listen, thanks again for joining us. And and, and, uh, we have a couple things to talk about. Uh, Our listeners may remember that I think the last time you were on the show, we talked about all the background uh, um, uh, cloak and dagger stuff between the Senate Intelligence Committee and the CIA as the as the Intelligence Committee was which uh, nominally has oversight for the CIA, was trying to get information for its report on the use of torture. Um, Now uh, that report is out, and I guess my first question to you is, having heard about this and read about it for so many months, uh, was the report what you expected? Was it different? What was your reaction to it based on what you knew going in? It was, and and, and as we got closer... uh, to it being released, we got some more more detailed briefings on what would be in it, and those comported pretty closely with with what was. Um, you know, particularly one of the last minute surprises uh, was that they ended up redacting uh, the names of the countries that participated in the in the torture and rendition program. Uh, at one point, it had been settled that the countries would be named. Uh, the intelligence community was extremely upset about it, but they had con- they had conceded it. Uh, and then, uh, you know, I, it, it was funny. So on I, on Sunday, I was actually talking to a, a an intelligence community source, and I said it's you know, I said it's strange that you know they fought so hard, uh, you know, to fight over personnel, you know, the the aliases of, of CIA personnel, but didn't fight so hard over the. Uh, uh, the names of the countries, Poland, etc. And uh, looking back on it, he, you know, he he just kind of looked at me and we gave a kind of a little bit of a smile. Uh, but he didn't he didn't he didn't he didn't actually respond to that. Um, and then the next day or two days later, the, r- the report came out and boom, the uh, all the countries mm-hmm. had been redacted. And so, uh, you know, looking back on our conversation. In hindsight, I was, uh, oh, I see. <laughs> they won, right. and I had right, realized right, it, right. and he didn't want to say it at the last minute. So they, so they won. And, but the funny thing is, everybody knows the countries, and you can piece them together, and they right. even put color codes in there. But, but, what, but the, what, what matters there is that for some reason, there is some significance, some political significance to the country's name appearing in the report that particularly causes problems for governments back home. You know, all of these governments, uh, you know, basically have, have been outed one by one reporter or one book or one memoir or another. Uh, and they've, uh, they've kind of already gone through their own political processes to, to deal with that. But there's something about seeing the name in print in a government, U S government authorized document, uh, that, that, that tends to, uh, push the situation even further. Uh, and so even though everybody knows what they are, the color coding, um, was kind of the compromise that the CIA came up with. And if you look around the world, you know, there were no protests or, or riots right. or, and no governments fell. Uh, uh, and so that's, that's just a peculiarity of, of foreign policy that, 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 and that was the one surprise that came out of it. The, re- the, the rest of it was, uh, horrifying, uh, in its detail, uh, but unfortunately expected in it, you know, in its general generality. Right. And, and, and absolutely. And, and I think, and as you said, we know some of those countries, Poland, Thailand, and so on. I wonder also, and we're just, just speculation, whether being named in the report would trigger some sort of international law or United Nations response. Or, I mean, it, I, it could, it's easier, right. It's easier to cite a U.S. government document than a Washington Post report in an international right. criminal court or whatever. And so, so these governments have, or at least for the moment, dodged some, whether it's just protests or whatever, some accountability for their actions as have mm-hmm. many of the individuals. Now, uh, one of the things that really surprised me about this was 
Well, in the reaction to it, in the way it was presented, and very much as a quote unquote partisan report uh, from the Democrats and <laughs> almost universally opposed by the Republicans. We had the, you know, I, I've experienced a moment of nostalgia for the days when we could think John McCain was a good guy because mm -hmm. he, he based based on experience, certainly spoke out eloquently against these practices. But how did something, in your opinion, Ryan Grimm mm -hmm. from the Huffington Post, how did something that should be as nonpartisan as, uh, you know, respect for the rule of law, and by the way, including violators of that respect on both sides of the aisle mm -hmm. for a long time, you know, Jack, Jack Kennedy was a big fan of black ops and so on. Um, how is it that it became so uh, what sort of polarized along political lines that virtually all the Republicans, with the exception of Susan Collins and John McCain, seem to oppose this, and, uh, and most Democrats seem to sign on to it? Well, part of it was that uh, Kit Bond, who was the, uh, the top Republican on the committee in 2009 when this was when this investigation was launched, uh, is no longer in the Senate. Uh, and, and you know he is a moderate, uh, you know, and he'd been he'd worked for years, if not decades, with with Dianne Feinstein, and they had come to some terms about how they would conduct uh, this enterprise. So, you know, his departure, um, you know, chipped away at that, and you know the CIA also kind of went to war over it. Um, mm. You know, they uh, they considered uh, these um, these Senate staffers who were uh, doing the investigation to be basically enemies. Uh, and uh, they, you know, they have plenty of contacts on, on the Republican side of the aisle and, and they use their, you know, they, they use their influence uh, with them to kind of, to kind of sour the, uh, uh, the relationship. And, and then the Senate staffers, uh, you know, also saw them also kind of uh, saw themselves as having some animosity with the with the CIA it was a very tense uh is very very tense very difficult uh relationship uh and so uh you know that 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 really contributed to it because there were there were there there really wasn't the sense that uh, they were anybody was in it together to kind of get to the truth. It it, it quickly became uh, a real knife fight. This the CIA even um, uh, forwarded uh, charges against Senate staffers to the Department of Justice. And, you know, a lot of people don't remember or realize that they wanted this. They wanted the Senate staff charged with crimes for the way that they were carrying out uh, the investigation. That CIA IG looked into the. Uh, the charges that were forwarded to the DOJ and determined that they were based on outright misinformation. Uh, the, the CIA then later was caught spying on the Senate staff. It, you know, it, was a, it, it got quite ugly, and when and when things get ugly like that in Washington, people pick sides, and you don't have to uh, give the Republicans much time to think about which side they're going to take in that fight. Well, interestingly in all this, and we're talking with Ryan Grimm, Washington political editor of the Huffington Post from their bustling newsroom, uh, interestingly enough, uh, by doing so, although they, this was not presented this way by anybody, the Repu weren't the Republicans in effect not only siding with the CIA, but siding with President Obama and the White House, who were also basically uh, picking up the, the chains and the knife uh, knives on the uh, CIA side of this gang fight, too. Yes, more or less, and and I think actually uh, the Senate Democrats are are largely to blame for that, and and here's why: they, when when they when they went into this investigation, uh, they they decided that the question they were going to answer is it was was torture effective over the five year period that it was that it was used by the CIA, and once you have once you have set up the question that way. Mm -hmm. Then you're then you're going to have uh, people, uh, you know, taking taking different taking different sides. And the CIA was, uh, I don't want to say forced, but the CIA had for years been saying uh, that that torture was effective, and so uh, both in public and in private. And so uh, they were being accused of lying. And so in order to uh, defend the kind of their you know their their the integrity of what they told the public and what they told the White House and Congress that they had to then prove that that torture worked and uh, in order to say that torture didn't work the Senate staffers had to argue that that the CIA was lying about it 
about it having worked. Mm-hmm. Um, now, but but to me, the question of whether it's effective is is the wrong one. Uh, right. even, even if you can conclusively answer that over that five year period, it wasn't effective. What's what's to convince? President Cruz or whoever that that he can't do it better. You know, if the only argument is that you didn't do it well enough, then uh, that's not an argument not to do it. That's just an argument to do it better. Well, there are a lot of things uh, that could conceivably be effective, quote unquote, that are against our values. I mean, you could take a suspect and kill his children one by one on live television. Um, Mm -hmm. That would probably be, or might be, effective, or perhaps not, based on what we know now. But that wouldn't be the question, would it? Right. No, burglary is effective. Right. Oh, well, we, we've been doing that. We've had black bag operations for years. I, I, I hate to true. sound cynical, but, you know, we have, uh, as, 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 as I've mentioned in sort of editorial comments, we have a president who says he's not going to take sides on this issue. I mean, it's not like he's in a position where he has to make decisions about matters of uh, tactics and importance. But um, It'd be uh, nice if he said, uh, I'm not going to take a position on it because it's wrong, immoral, and illegal. And therefore, it doesn't right. matter if it's effective, if, that, if that's what he was saying. But they're kind of just saying, uh, we're not going to take sides in it. To, you know, to his credit, he ended it, campaigned against it, and, and ended it. Uh, to his discredit, nobody was prosecuted. And you, and you get the, the charade of uh, the CIA director saying, look, there were no prosecutable crimes. Right. So therefore, nobody did anything wrong. And I have the suspicion that as much as anything else, he ended it because it wasn't effective. I mean, that's the irony of all this. Um, but having said that, I, I guess the o- other question I, I'd love to ask you about this just briefly, and then we'll go to a break. But um, any th- we know that, uh, well, we have to assume that if this is what was in it, after all the redaction and all the negotiation and all the back and forth, um, there had to be some pretty horrible stuff that wasn't in it, right? There were, I mean, there were a lot of moments where it would say, you know, for more details on this, see Volume 3. You'd be like, what do you mean, see Volume 3? Give, give me Volume 3, and then, right. <laughs> and then, I, right. will see, then I will see Volume 3. But even, even what they did include in this, you know, you know, accidentally picking up your own sources and torturing them, uh, you know, and, and until headquarters tells you, oh, what these people are telling you under torture is true. They actually are CIA sources. Uh, you know, uh, that that sort of thing, and uh, and j- just the brutality of the of 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 the of the torture, uh, the sleep deprivation. You know, which comes right from uh, the Soviet gulag. Uh, you know, they they studied the Soviet system and adopted its most most heinous practices. And its most heinous of which. Uh, is sleep deprivation, which, which has the the benefit for defenders of saying, oh, what, so what, you know, it's not a Four Seasons, right, 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 yeah, uh, w- which is just appalling. 